Today's lecture is how did aggressions by Germany, Italy, and Japan lead the world toward war? In each country, you have to look at how the League of Nations failed. So the first country we're going to talk about is uh, Japan. The militarists. The militarists were people who glorify the power of the military. And uh, the military leaders, they gained control of Japan after the collapse of the world economy in 1929. Uh, we need a strong military to protect ourselves. This was kind of the uh, platform they ran on. And this guy right here, Emperor Hirohito, becomes a symbol of state power. And what they said is, okay, if we're going to have a strong military, we're going to use that military to conquer other countries. And we're going to expand into foreign countries, and we'll use that. And the place they looked to, as we talked about in a previous lecture, was China. And um, they knew China was involved in a civil war between Jiang Jishi and Mao Zedong. So they go into Manchuria in 1933. Excuse me. And this was a direct challenge to the power of the League of Nations. But in reality, the League of Nations had no power to stop Japan. Here's a good political cartoon. You've got the bunny being the League of Nations and international strife or international conflict being the boa constrictor. Who's going to win? Not the League of Nations because it's just a weak little bunny. So in 1937, Japan invades China proper. They were up here in Manchuria and then they get into here, into China itself. Jiang Jishi's army cannot stop Japan. But Mao Zedong, he stays in these areas right here and in Manchuria, and he actually resists using guerrilla warfare against the Japanese, which makes him even more popular with the peasants. So uh, the League of Nations, all they say is bad Japan. They really can't do anything about it. But this inspires this man here, Benito Mussolini, to invade Ethiopia. He was nicknamed was Il Duce, the leader, and he founded a new political party called the Fascists or the Fasciste, and um, they were ultra nationalists. They they were extreme nationalists, and um, Italy had always felt out felt that the League of Nations had kind of given them the short end of the stick, and so they finally conquer Ethiopia, one of the only a, um, independent African countries left. And this was kind of revenge for the Italian defeat in 1890 that Menelik II had given the Italians. And that kind of spills over into the Spanish Civil War, where Francisco Franco had become the fascist leader of Spain, and he has a revolution against the Na uh, a revolution against um, I forget the other group, but he has a revolution against the existing power of Spain, and he is supported by fascists in Italy and Germany. And they use their military power, especially this new type of warfare where you bomb even civilian populations, and they, he uses their air power to win the war. And here's a very famous painting called the Guernica, which is about the size of my back classroom wall. It's huge, painted by Pablo Picasso, and it is about the bombing the fascists gave to the city of Guernica. And you can see here's a horse being killed by a bomb, somebody getting caught in flames. And Picasso is a very famous Cubist painting, and this is his painting of that event. Now, the events in uh, Japan and Italy, um, the League of Nations did nothing. They, they just said, bad Japan, bad Italy, and they, and they do nothing. So this motivates the fascist leader of Germany, Hitler, to violate the Treaty of Versailles. And the first place he violates it is in Czechoslovakia. Well, before that, he actually builds up a huge army, violating the, uh, Czechos violating the Treaty of Versailles. And he uses the big army. He says, I need to get this part of Czechoslovakia, the Sudetenland. And they say, OK, we'll have a big meeting about it. And they don't invite the Czechs. And they give them this part, the Sudetenland, this kind of western edge of Czechoslovakia. They give it to us. It's part of the policy of appeasement, where you give in to an aggressor to make peace. And the British Prime Minister at the time, Neville Chamberlain, he actually comes back to England. He says, we will have peace in our time with this paper. Mr. Hitler will agree to sign this power. But in reality, Hitler had uh, outsmarted Chamberlain. This creates the Third Reich, German Empire. You have another German Empire. Um, they, they have taken the Rhineland over here, which was supposed to be demilitarized. They take the Sudetenland here. And then they have Anschluss, combination with Austria. And then they take the rest of Czechoslovakia. And then they're going to take Albania. And everybody knows that the fascists hate the communists. That was one of their big enemies. But Hitler surprises the entire world 
when he signs the non-aggression pact between Hitler and Stalin. And it's a public agreement that states no war for 10 years, but privately they split the country of Poland right here. And what they do is uh, Germany says we'll take Western Poland and the Soviet Union takes Eastern Poland. And even though we hate each other, we hate France and Ger uh, Britain more than we hate the, Ger the Germans and the Russians hate each other. And it is the invasion of Poland in September of 1939 that starts World War II.